Hello everyone and welcome to TFYLP, Transformers for Your Listening Pleasure, episode number 281, recorded March 17th, 2018. I am your host, Daron Land, a.k.a. Weird Wolf. Along with me this evening is Rick Alvarez. Greetings, people of Earth. Up in the upper little right-hand corner, a little dot that won't give him a full picture, Robert. <laughs> Hi. It's, it's pronounced Robert. Robert. I don't think that's correct. X Zal X <laughs> Mutton Chops, whatever you want to call him. <laughs> the big red doofus. Oh wait a minute. Speaking of bed big red doofus. <laughs> what? <laughs> Christian. That was just rude. <laughs> just I can't I can't believe you said that. What a jerk. They're what jealous of the gingerness. We'll just we'll just shove you in one yeah, of those empty really. cases behind you. <laughs> Rob gonna have to gang up on him. <laughs> two gingers is better than one. Oh yeah, especially uh, today. My, beard, my beard's red. My beard's there you red. Go. Two and a half. It doesn't look it, but mine is actually two. That's weird. But um, also is drinking a glass of Gen- uh, Guinness on uh, on St. Patty's Day. <laughs> Aaron Archer. Hey, welcome back. <clears throat> we are uh, we are going to be uh, talking about uh, actually something rather sad uh, today. Yes, um, Tomb Raider. Yeah, yeah, no, not Tomb Raider. <laughs> I think you said something sad, and I it's the first thing that came to mind. Well, uh, at first last I was Jedi say, DVD. <laughs> we were going to be talking about something sad, and that was that was Rick's face. <laughs> but you know, uh, <laughs> next time, he, gadget. <laughs> it's like the the cards against humanity card a sad, a sad hand job you know <laughs> uh, <laughs> off the tracks <laughs> um but anyway uh tonight we're going to be talking about uh something that's actually been in the news quite a bit for the last several weeks actually um and that is the closer of Toys R Us uh Toys R Us at least The United States uh, stores are all closing out. Uh, Right now, it looks like the Canada stores are still going to be intact, but I don't know how long that's going to last. There is uh, uh, some word that there are uh, some uh, people trying to buy out Toys R Us uh, in order to keep it open in Canada uh, and then the top performing stores in the United States uh, keep those as well. Uh, but I don't think there's been any news on that front. Has anybody heard anything else that I've, I haven't seen? It's, uh, it's a company called MGA. And they are looking to purchase uh, all, I believe, 60 Canadian Toys R Us, along with the top 200 performing U.S. stores and continue to operate them as Toys R Us, Uh, but there has not been any word since Thursday on how their bid is going. Now, uh, the reason Toys R Us is going into uh, bankruptcy is, well, they have considerable debt, apparently, uh, to uh, a number of their their suppliers, I guess, and lenders, and... (sighs) It's a whole lot of corporate mumbo jumbo that I, that I haven't, I, I don't really get the the gist of. But it, it sounds um, like the short version is that for ten, fifteen, maybe twenty years, they've all their money has been spent in constantly paying back this debt and trying to pay down the debt, and so they haven't been years. able to invest in the, into the stores at all. Mm-hmm. And so the stores yep. have said very stagnant since they got a leverage buyout in two thousand five. That's what's been going on. Yeah, it was a profitable, very profitable business, and at that time had very big plans to redo all the stores and change them to a different experience right around that time. And then that all halted when that happened. I remember they were going to uh, make it an interactive uh, store, and you were going to be able to ride the bikes and you know play Legos and all that stuff, and it never really came to be. Which, to a degree, they, they do do that now, but it ne- not to the... Yeah. Not, not to not, the level the, uh, right. the New York store had. You know, that was like the flagship version of it. Well, the thing is with, uh, with Toys R Us is that, um, you know, it's, it's always been like the toy store. Anybody ever 
uh, if you if you mention the word toy store, usually first the first thing that would pop in your head is Toys R Us. At least it was for me. Uh, even growing up, uh, you know, Toys R Us was a little bit outshadowed in my area by Children's Palace. Uh, but uh, an- another one that's never that's heard of it. And, I'm yeah, one state south had, of you, and I've never heard of that. Yeah, we had that. We didn't have Children's Palace until the 90s. Yeah. Uh, I but, had Kitty City. But, um, well, the Lexington area, we had a Toys R Us and we had a uh, Children's Palace. And it seemed like Children's Palace was always the place to go in Lexington. Uh, but then whenever Children's Palace went out, uh, then Toys R Us, uh, you know, they, they immediately stepped to the forefront in this area. But nationally and internationally, it's always been Toys R Us. The, they, they always had the, the familiar jingle, um, you know, I don't want to grow up. I'm a Toys R Us kid. You know, everybody everybody knows it. Um, and I think every one of us, even here on the podcast, can can say, you know, we we feel that that Id- identifies with us uh, in, in every way because you know I don't I don't want to grow up. I mean, I, I still collect toys. You know, I'm, I still take an active interest in toys, um, and I get. I got a lot of toys from Toys R Us over the years. Um, so, you know, their, their mantra is, is, is pretty accurate. Um, but with the buyout, it seems that, you know, th- this ultimate goal uh, was pretty much uh, set in stone whenever they, they, they did the buyout. It's like they did it with the intent uh, to basically liquidate all the assets and leave it a shell of what it uh, what it could have been or what it was supposed to be, and um, which is sad. Uh, you know, anybody? Uh, go ahead, Christian. Yeah, I think what happened in the buyout is that whatever big conglomerate bought them transferred the debt that they had accrued from buying out other things, and it transferred yeah. all over to Toys R Us. So that Toys R Us then had the burden that everyone else could go on existing. And what's and what's also terrible about this uh, the, this sudden re- relatively sudden closure? Uh, I was reading an article. I believe it was last night or not before last. My working third shift, everything blurs together on me. So um, the uh, the shut down of Toys R Us and the, uh, the collapse of it has been rather, has been so quick. Uh, some, some analysts say they have never seen one, uh, collapse as fast as Toys R Us has. Um, you know, I'm, they're basically imploding and, you know, it's, it's, it's scary, you know, for the, not just the toy business but i mean how many other businesses are going to uh, are going to do this and in in addition uh with the sudden closure there's a lot of purchase orders that are uh not paid for that are en route to toys r us that vendors are not going to be paid for you know i'm sure hasbro's got uh, a ton of stuff en route to toys r us warehouses as we speak uh that have yet to be paid for they're on a on a on an invoice somewhere uh, and likely they will never be paid for, you know. Uh, so they'll... I uh, spoke to my friend who is a manager at Toys R Us yesterday, and he said as of right now there's no more deliveries, but with the bankruptcy company, basically when they go into liquidation, it's like another company comes in and takes over. They haven't decided whether they're going to continue ship it, shipments to the stores yet. That, so or just possible. or just ship it to a liquidation, right? Uh, so it's possible some uh, some exclusives might might show up during the liquidation sales, or may just sit in warehouses for a year or two before they they end up at a uh, TJ Maxx. Were yeah. there any uh, Transformers exclusives that's how, that's how it goes. that have not been released yet, or that Studio were... Series Thundercracker and and Masterpiece Barricade? Oh. Masterpiece Ironhide. I don't was, know if he was ever announced to go to Toys R Us. Actually, I mean, theoretically, he would have, but I don't remember hearing that. D- does the movie Masterpieces do they have any other outlet other than Toys R Us? Not now, but Ironhide never had the sticker on it when they revealed the packaging, so I don't know. 
Yeah, you know, with the whole yeah. brand unity push with Hasbro and Takara, I kind of wonder what that means for that line. Then, I, I mean, I wonder if another vendor will step up to take it, or Amazon, or what? Maybe. I'm hoping it's Amazon. That, that's that's the biggest player I would see. You know, it's like Toys R Us out of the picture. Amazon seems to be the la- uh, the would be the most likely, I guess. Well, they may pick up those projects that are already done, but that doesn't mean they're going to all of a sudden pick up as many exclusives as Toys R Us would have done. Mm-hmm. Um, you know I mean, yeah. those items may show up in your collection, thankfully. But that doesn't mean the future ones will ever find a. They'll, they'll never be invented to have a home. So, so the stuff that's currently in design <clears throat> may just fall by the way. Not go forward. Not, not, not go to manufacturing. Well, the nature of exclusives is you, they pitch a lot of things to all those companies, and each company has a different spin on what they want out of it. Whether it's a main character or a price point or a, you know whatever. Um, so they'll still pitch that stuff that might have previously been Toys R Us exclusives, but if it doesn't fit that vendor's process or thought process, then it, it just won't matter. Could it be a you know, possibility, uh, someone like Big Bad Toy Store? Uh, I mean, they have a huge online footprint. Uh, as far uh, again, as products that are done can always find an outlet. Yeah. But, but the idea that there'll be a home for future exclusive opportunities won't exist because the nature, and I don't know if this is when you want to get into it of why exclusives exist is to fill those long shelves full of product. Yeah. You know, it's not just to give yeah. special product to chase for the hardcore collectors. It's, it, it's a whole part of the structure of how things are purchased, how much is purchased, how deep they get purchased. It's just like an incentive comic book cover at your comic book store, right? Mm-hmm. If you order 25 of these, you get a blank or, you know, it's a lot like that. So they just won't exist because they don't need to exist. Yeah. Uh, those items, there's no filling that pipeline anymore. So why have an exclusive? Uh, so you know, you, well, if ahead. you bring up B- Big Bad as a potential holder for it, if I think back to the at least three cases that come to my mind of when Big Bad has done Transformer exclusives, all of them have sat around on their site forever and got heavily clearanced. And as for, yeah. for all well, I know, they still have them. It felt like the, every time it hasn't been good for them. The Piranha well, Connery issue uh, comes to mind. Uh, well, the, that the was most, one of them. The most famous one was the uh, Dark Energon uh, repaints from Transformers Prime. I was thinking, I was those too. thinking about that. A- Originally, was- they were not a Big Bad Toy Store exclusive. Um, I think those were going to go to Walmart. And because they were done, Big Bad just kind of picked them up. Like, And the yeah. last thing, that, yeah. one of those that came to mind was Battle Unicorn. Mm. Yeah. And the Aveo Swerve. Was the Aveo Swerve I- a Big Bad well, exclusive? The Aveo... No, the Aveo Swerve was the Chevrolet exclusive. That never had another outlet because there was never any packaging for it. Until Big yeah, Bad got the, like a couple hundred of them in the end. In that's the where I got mine eventually. The, the plastic bags? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, at some point, those things get clearanced out after that promotion is done. So they went somewhere. I'm sure there were more toys than people drove those cars to get that exclusive. Um, so, you know, how they get yeah. filtered through eventually, you know, is going to happen, but it wasn't initially there exclusives. So. Yeah. I, I remember one day at, at Hasbro, I found a box with a bunch of those Aveos in it. They all had oh, yeah. tags though. So I didn't know what they yeah. were. So I just kind of threw them out. Those box, that box sat around forever. <laughs> they had what? Ta- what? Oh, the green, no, the, like yeah, the, the green big tag. green tags. There was there was a box of those that sat around forever. <laughs> I uh, I had a mock kick versus Arcadus that had a green tag on the back, but I sold it. I think Michael Swift actually has it now. Um, but anyway, um, last week, Aaron, you uh, you messaged me and uh, and your your idea uh, really intrigued me. Is uh, is a different angle on this that a lot of people might not 
uh, know about or even consider. Uh, and that would be um, the impact of Toys R Us's uh, demise on the industry from from within the industry. How does how does how will it affect the industry as a whole? Um, and would you like to go into that some now or? Yeah, I'll, I'll try to top line it. I mean, for me, from being so long into a process, I'll start with saying I, you know. I've heard this from other people as well. I mean, when I started, we were still selling the Kmart pretty heavily and, and target really was, wasn't big yet and all this. So the idea that, you know, these things do have cycles is interesting. Um, but, uh, the, from internally, it's easy to go, okay, it's 10, 15% of the market. There's other places that'll, you know, you can still get product, blah, blah. That's fine. But, you know, the idea that it's an exclusive toy store is kind of a place where toy companies can explore wider ranges of product lines and explore new opportunities. Until they're proven, it's hard to get into the the Walmarts and the Targets in a way. Um, And I wonder how it affects the smaller mid companies who, you know, like I'll just I'll just say like a moose that has a lot of different types of product. You know, they have a lot of shelf space at a, at, a, at a big Toys R Us. At a Walmart, they artificially become a much smaller company because they don't get as much shelf space. So, like, the demise of a toy store that dedicates itself to toys and aisles, wide aisles of ideas, um, good, bad, and different, um, that losing that uh, will slowly change over time the types of things we see. Um and I think I'll start stop there to have a general, you know, if you guys have general thoughts that's, on that. Um, that's actually the same thing a friend of ours, Steve Drucker, told me <laughs> uh, the other day. What's going to happen to the little toy guy? Yeah, well, you might get one item in, you know, and that's great. Whereas Toys R Us let you kind of make eight items, 12 items. And you might get two into a, a, a Walmart. Um, that affects how your company can grow. That affects... A lot of things. Well, for example, uh, like the, the, the commemorative series reissues, you know, they had the entire line of commemorative series. You know, yeah. uh, how, many, how many different products were released under that, uh, under that banner? Um, you know, whereas, they had the shelf space, yeah. you know, and, whereas, and they were happy to fill it. And, yeah. Well, they, they had those, and then they had whatever was current at the time in addition to those. Uh, so you had so much choice, but whereas if you went to like Walmart or Kmart or Target, uh, all you would have would be, I think at the time, what was it, Armada that was on the shelf, maybe Energon. Um, so you know, it, it, the, the mind, the mindset of a Walmart or a Target, and this isn't bad or good or whatever, but think of take all the logos off all the packaging in the whole store. You know, they just have a small section of toys and those toys have to be certain as profitable as the underwear and the motor oil and the planting soil and everything else. Right. Um, It becomes more of a a profit equation for those other stores versus the love of or promotion of kids, entertainment, kids, fun, kids, action, development, uh, you know. And no one's talking about babies are us either. I mean, and I think that's kind of a shame too, because they're caught up in this a bit. And, you know, a lot of people use that for a lot of good things as well. Um, the baby registry. But I, yeah. but I digress. Yeah. Um, but it's all, it's all part of the same thing, right? Development of, of children and what they're into and what inspires them. And so anyway, uh, you know, I think, I think that's like, you know, I don't have the kind of, you know, industry insider view that you would have Aaron or that Rick would have, you know, but from an outsider looking in, I haven't bought anything at Toys R Us realistically in years. Um, and I'm, I mean, as you can see behind me, that's a very small portion of my collection. Um, you know, and I have two kids, I got two girls and we buy toys for them. Um, and we don't buy them at, or very, very rarely buy something at Toys R Us for them. You know, we might just for the experience for one of my daughters to kind of get the use of cash, like here's some money, we'll go to the store and you can spend it. Yeah. But she was honestly just as happy at Target as she is at Toys R Us, which is kind of interesting. Um, but, you know, 
as the internet continues to rise, brick and mortar is going to kind of continue to have to find its place in the world. And I feel that with the internet being out there, you don't need the huge expense of a toy store to get your idea out there. You know, there's, you know, Kickstarters and, you know, yeah, go yeah. F- and me, Indiegogo's. There's a lot of ways to get your small, interesting toy idea out there. You know, and I know some of the people on the call have had experience with Kickstarter. You know, um, it's, there's a lot more out there these days than just if I can't get into Walmart, then I'm dead. Or and now, oh well, maybe I could go to Toys R Us. Walmart yeah. open to it. It does suck to see an avenue shut, but you know it's the whole close a door, you open a window uh, thing. And I feel yeah. that there's a lot out there. And then with social media advertising out there as well, word of mouth, getting it out there. I think uh, I, it just. Uh, I don't disagree with that. It just. It, it explodes it back out into those individual little things. So if I've been looking for wood trains, I'll find the wood trains. If I'm looking for, you know, Paw Patrol stuff, I'll find that too. You're right. Um, but having one place, an aggregator where you know you could at least go, it has, ha- has certain value. I don't discount it. I mean, I've probably been to Toys R Us more in the last couple months than I had in years prior. Uh, so yeah, it has its faults and we probably should talk about some of those as well, but, um, there's something about the, the idea that they would put more things on the shelf than you'll ever get anywhere else. That at least, at least keeps a further barrier from only having big blockbuster, surefire, number one hit show kind of crap thrown at us. Um, that's my mentality of it. I was I like the idea that there's a barrier where calico critters can live and and all this stuff that that, that Toys R Us helped in my mind defend. Uh, but you know, other places can do that too. What do you feel about you know a place for a small places to go? What do you feel about like specialty stores? You know, <laughs> like you might find some of the stuff that like you know I hate to say it, but like Hot Topic. You know, or even, you know, comic book stores, yeah, you know, well, I if think, you have those I th- still. I, I think, I mean, I don't know what Mattel's doing these days. I don't think most of us do. But <laughs> um, Hasbro has always ish- had an issue getting into the smaller, that, that, that third, fourth tier level, right? If it's not, they don't do anything past Diamond. And if you order through Diamond, you get those toys two, three months after everyone else does. So... They probably could improve their smaller market distribution of core figures and collector type things to get into comic book stores better, get into maybe those smaller market toy stores or specialty toy stores. Absolutely. But, you know, that's how they're going to have to figure out where to get that revenue. Do they spend time and effort to develop all those new channels for little money, but a lot of contact? Or do they just kind of double down on you know, Sam's Club and, and something else and go that route, you know, who, who knows, but they can do it if they want to. Uh, Christian, you have uh, a thought on along these lines? Well, we were talking about Toys R Us being an aggregator for toys, but for me, it's, it's never been, I mean, there's definitely a variety, but every time I've been to Toys R Us, probably in the past decade, I see the same products languishing on shelves. They don't have a lot of turnover. At least not around me. Maybe you guys are different, but when I go there, I never expect to find new stuff. Well, oh, look, it's more wave it one. Stays well, it's it's uh, a good example is uh, whenever I got my uh, Cybertron Primus. Well, the uh, I, I keep wanting to call it Primus, but I think this release was just called simply Cybertron, the, the blue Cybertron. Yeah. Yep. Uh, T2 Primus. Yeah. Uh, the. I, the way I paid for it was I had two gift cards uh, that I'd received for Christmas. I, I received a $50 gift card for this past Christmas, and then I still had a $50 gift card from Christmas before that. Both of them to That's Toys R Us. Nothing to buy. Because literally, there was nothing to buy. Every time I would go in, it would be like the, the exclusives would have a naked sp- a space on the shelf uh, because either a... A scalper that worked at the store had already cleared out the stock and put it on eBay uh, for like double the price, or they never got it. Uh, case in point, uh, the year of the horse uh, stuff never mm-hmm. never came to never here either. One of the uh, one of the uh, Toys R Us's in this area. The other one got some, 
but uh, the other year the horse or the other Toys R Us uh, didn't get them. Or if they did, it's very very small shipment. Yeah, and, but think think about Toys R Us from a point of view of some little little kids, collector with little kids. Mm-hmm. All right, so I go to Toys R Us and. Now, the way I collect Transformers is a little differently from other people. So I look at the big boys Transformers, then I head over and I look at my rescue bots. But in between, I'm stopping to look at the Barbie figures for Casey. I'm stopping to look at the Peppa Pig stuff for Maddie. Uh, I'm looking at the Power Wheels. I'm looking at the bikes for all of them. And when I bring the girls with me, it's we're there for a while. It's it's a walking experience. You're not going to get that at Walmart. You're not going to get that at Target. Well, I, I fully and, I fully get that because I and and by contrast, you know, whenever I go in, I would go in by myself. I would go in for a specific thing. I was going in to look at the Transformers, uh, and occasionally I'd go back and check out like the Legos and see what was new in there. Uh, but I'm not a big Lego guy, so you know, just just to see what they had. Um, but whenever we would go in, like with uh, my girlfriend's daughter, uh, we would check out the Transformers. Then we would go around and look at the Shopkins. She's really huge on Shopkins right now. That's like, uh, you know, I don't get it. They're like a little squish delish. Yeah, <laughs> they they look like erasers. My daughter has but, a crap ton of them. Yes, uh, so does Jasmine. She has a butt ton of them, um, you know, and they, they're they're neat, but they they're essentially erasers. That's <laughs> what it looks like. But um, but then again, you know, whenever I was uh, whenever I was much younger than her, my dad referred to He Man toys as little rubber men and rubber dolls. You know, he he you know he grew up in the depression era and he's he not wrong he didn't he didn't care about that stuff i was wasting my time and wasting my energy you know but i, I saw magic we in are not ones to judge no uh but you're you're right rick i mean you know uh, the the shopping habit changed you know depending on you know if you had kids in tow uh you know my five minute trip into toys r us would turn into we'd be in there 20 30 40 five minutes to an hour uh you know looking at uh, looking at things you know so that's a positive for some a negative for others that's yeah a hundred percent negative for me i i don't like children <laughs> staying in there that long with children around is just torture for me Uh-oh. well it's hard it's hard to go buy a gift and and hide it because you're at a toy store if you're mm-hmm. with your kids so that that's Except a factor we, we've um, done all of our christmases top almost top to bottom through amazon for years now yeah you know, or, or, or I know. Honestly, we, we might order some stuff from Toys R Us online, or some from Target online as well. Um, but you know, our our brick and mortar pe- presence, you know, with our family with two girls, is pretty small. We don't we don't do it too much anymore. Well, that- well, we had the same thing with Toys R Us gift cards, and so the like two weeks ago, I was telling my wife, I was like, "You need to dig up those Toys R Us gift cards. We got to use them." And yeah. we bought some video games with them, which you could buy anywhere. Well, if they had not had the Cybertron there, I would li- uh, likely have wound up getting a uh, uh, Nintendo Switch. That was that was my other thing because literally, I mean, uh, someone uh, I think shared it might have been on the TFYP group. It might have been on the uh, uh, Kentucky Transformers group, uh, but there was a picture. Somebody took a picture of the offering of Transformers at the St. Matthews Toys R Us, which is the one that's closest to me. And it, you know, I think there might have been like a handful of Titan Masters and some of the One Step Changers from the last night. Yep, that's why I saw my most recent trip. And, and they had, they still had a couple of the Primus or the Cybertrons. Uh, so uh, mine still had a bunch of movie like sized guys, Voyager like. <laughs> This movie two twins. Yeah. Wow. They're, they're just sitting there. <laughs> now I have I have walked into a Toys R Us, not this particular one, but uh, others. Uh, I know the one in, in Lexington. Sometimes you could go in there and randomly see something from say five years ago, uh, uh, put out on the shelf. Like they found a case of it and would throw it out on the shelf, and you're like, wow, you know, this is this is lucky. Um, 
you know, it, it's just it's just weird how Toys R Us would do those things. And it just, I don't remember a whole lot before the buyout. I, I do remember shopping Toys R Us before the buyout. Uh, but since the buyout, I, I don't recall a favorable shopping experience at Toys R Us. E- even, but despite that, I still have a fond uh, a fond When feeling. you reach back into the 80s yeah. memories? Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, clearly they were doing something wrong because we're all, I mean, they had a big staff in New Jersey designing in-house products of designers and marketers and, and, and all that, let alone all the people that run a store. And, uh, you know, in spite of all that effort, something didn't work, you know, whether we didn't like going there, it didn't, they didn't dress it up. They didn't make it clear, but, um, uh, it is yeah. kind of peculiar to me. Like it, it wasn't like they, you know, just slow rolled it completely. They just didn't do it right. Do, do, you, do you remember the X design? The uh, of the aisles, they uh, they uh, arranged yeah, them yeah, into yeah, yeah. into a huge X. Um, yeah, that was part of the, that was part of that um, new format. They were going to have a central hub, and then everything was going to be in zones that you could constantly explore. To the goal of what you just said, Rick, like you go and you can kind of be there for a while, kind of event entertainment. You were supposed to then. I think those same ones had some shelving display up in the middle um of those x's uh and you know it was supposed to be be more of an event to go to the toy store right and i think they were going to have birthday parties and and do some of those things as well at one point um and that never came to pass and then it then those x's were weird it seems like i remember hearing of some stores uh changing over to the x pattern but and it's and it's entirely possible that the ones uh, the like the ones here in Louisville and the one in Lexington that I went to, uh, it's entirely possible that they had it for a while. But I don't recall it. Um, I, I you know I remember the uh, the shelves. I was, yeah, I was probably spoiled too because I know the one closest to Hasbro was by default set up to be the most modern looking Toys R Us, right? So if any employee went to a Toys R Us, they saw the sweetest Toys R Us you could see. That is um, true. Yeah. So that, that Attleboro Toys R Us, that's where the X's were that I saw. Um, so that's kind of funny. I didn't re- I didn't think of that until just now. Did Did uh, they always make sure that it had the freshest product too? Yeah. Uh, no, that. Right, Rick. You, you know, me. I remember sometimes there's a few, there's there were occasions I couldn't find something in the employee store. And I'd go to Toys R Us and it'd be there. But but uh, the Walmart, you had to. I think you had to cross. You had to go in front of Walmart before you got to Toys R Us. Hasbro, yep. Walmart, Toys R Us were all on the same road. The Walmart was pretty good too. Yeah, I don't think I was ever in that Walmart. So I'm curious. Do you know Toys R Us is gone? You know, a bunch of reasons. Do we think that there is a market for a new brick and mortar toy store? That could be successful, you know, with so much thing, so many things shifting online. Like I said, I don't, I don't do my toy shopping in stores anymore. Period. I get it all online. I'll get it from you know Orson at Captured Prey, or I'll get it from Big Bad as a fallback, typically. You know, and that's that's where I get my toys. You know, if Hasbro let me buy it direct, I would do it. You know, if I could get single figures, one hundred percent. Yeah. You know, yeah. well, that those um, are and, and I have the kids. Decisions, those are probably the decisions Hasbro's trying to figure out. I mean, up until now, you know, they big companies they don't want to really also be the sellers right they make their deals and their profits by working with you know the brick and mortars uh but more and more you i think they are going to have to take destiny in, in their own hands and talk to more and more people however that happens i mean you know the thought as an internet pretty much an internet only buyer the thought of going to you know a big toy store that's kind of an experience and being able to check stuff out and to take my kids and have fun with them while I'm there, you know, kind of in some way, you know, kind of share the toy collecting hobby, even though we're collecting different things. Although she loves uh, Titan Returns, my seven-year-old. She loves the Headmasters. Any new toy I get, she's like, is it a Headmaster? And I'm like, no, those are kind of done now. No, my six-year-old loves, 
she loves asking if the head comes off the figures. Yeah, she there. loves that. <laughs> but it's a great. You know, like, that sounds that sounds appealing <laughs> to me. I still don't know if I can make time to go that often for a store to be profitable. At least not for me. But it sounds like you know. Christian's kind of more on that lane with me, but it sounds like the rest of you guys still go to the brick and mortars more often to do your hunts. Here, here's the thing. Like, comic book stores are dying out. There's, uh, what, 1,100 some comic book stores left in the country. And, yeah. and it's going to get to a point where we're not going to have enough comic book stores to support the comic book industry as it exists right now. And we're going to lose it's probably already half the titles it. forever. Well, and we're at that we're at that point now on a macro level with Toys R Us, where maybe it's the shopping experience, or maybe it's the incursion of video games into uh, lives versus actually playing with toys and riding bikes and doing crafts. The world the world is a more digital place now i think it's more or uh, more along the lines of a online shopping experience the ease of online shopping is killing the brick and mortar uh we know that walmart's uh their bottom line has been hurt by amazon tremendously uh that's been documented a a lot uh within the news uh i know um I'm I'm pulling a number out of my ass right now, but uh, it seemed like four point some odd billion dollars uh, that Walmart lost to Amazon uh, in just the last five to ten years. You know it. You know and that that seems very reasonable and realistic, considering if you think how many people like Robert, like myself, uh, you know, I've 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 ordered just random stuff off of Amazon as opposing to going to Walmart and get it. But well, not not just because it's cheaper, but because they bring it right to my front door. I don't have to go get it, you know. Um, but but you know what you're looking for. Mm-hmm. You know what it would cost other places. Um, and so you can make that option. Yeah. But what if you didn't know what you were looking for and didn't know how big the package sizes were for different price points or didn't know how complex a certain thing was or felt, you know, That's, I'm not making the case. I'm not making the case that internet is bad, right? That no, we yeah. all buy our stuff. I it's mean, a good question. I went, though. I, I went through years uh, without buying anything at a store, but, um, the tactile nature of, of surprise and, Oh, look at this. I'm going to get this for Jimmy. You know, uh, that, that any store gives you any store gives you uh, brick and mortar, uh, you know, is exciting that last minute purchase the impulse purchase yeah. the the shut me up toy all all of these things operate completely on seeing them and and feeling them and shaking them and going is this the value i want to pay or will this you know take care of the issue um uh you know and that's what brick and mortar should give you the you know you want we want to touch these things because if you don't know it exists you'll never know to look for it that's how i feel about bookstores i used to love going to the bookstore i bought all kinds of crazy design books they all closed up i don't buy books anymore because i don't know what's out there um, yeah, I, I think that's all, where they're not all there for me to cherry pick through and and you know touch and stuff and so a whole part of my my kind of hobby my visual interests uh, has fallen off considerably. Um, so I don't know how that translates to toys eventually, but um, it, it might. For, again, you know, for my family, that's where I think the internet has some room to do, but it's also, I think, made a lot of inroads in that. I can I can search for, you know, robot toy, and, you know, Amazon will give me all kinds of stuff. Um, it's honestly, searching for stuff on Amazon almost kind of has the opposite problem of too much choice. Mm-hmm. Have you ever tried to buy a broom on Amazon? <laughs> it's really yeah. difficult yeah. to buy a broom on Amazon. There's yeah. so many brooms. It's like, I just want a <laughs> broom. One that isn't going to fall apart when I get it in the door. And when you sell it to 10,000 people and all of them give their reviews on it, somebody's broom broke the second they got it. I guarantee mm. you. Um, but, you know, I do think it's it's getting there to be able to give that information about, you know, reviews, aggregate reviews, so you get an idea of it. And at least for the toy aspect... You know, YouTube, YouTube videos and video reviews, tabletop reviews are huge. There's, you name any brand, you know, even Shopkins, you know, they're doing 
box openings and you can not only, you can't touch it yourself you can't hold it in hand and, and see how it is but you're going to see somebody with it they're comparing it to the other toys and they're telling you about it live yeah, while you can see it so i think you're, it's you're talking about some of that you're talking about the future that exists today i mean you are you know if you put all those things together eventually a company might you know you're going to be able to virtually inter- interact with it and understand what it does and how it plugs into your other products and uh, yeah uh, and companies are going to have to come up the speed probably with that. But you are you're you're living in the modern sense of it all, absolutely. Um, I'll tell you, you know, since I've been kind of the Debbie Downer, like I'm not sad. Toys R Us is gone. Uh, aside from the I'm a toy collector in another avenue. I know that's bad, you, you know. But uh, if there was a store I could go to and cover your ears, Aaron, where I could check out third party products before I bought <laughs> them in hand, that would probably be pretty interesting to me. And I know I'm sure, Orson, I'm sure it would be. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, and, and that's even with the YouTube videos that, you know, yeah, I can find out everything about it. But sometimes it would be cool to be able to kind of see them there. There's definitely there's definitely value there. I don't know if it's enough value in it to fund the yeah. really expensive cost of owning a store, a physical store and having it up and running. Yeah. Well, you know, is whenever you talk about like, uh, bring it back to Transformers, uh, you know, the brick and mortar aspect of it. Uh, I can relate to the fact of, uh, uh, well, right now I have all of Wave 2 uh, of Power of the Primes pre ordered at Capture Prey with Orson. Uh, with the exception of there was, I think, three figures out of the entire second wave that I did not pre order. Uh, simply because I'm like, I'm not entirely sure I want that toy. Uh, and I leave it up to seeing it in a store. I want to see it in a store, hold it in my hands, look at it, and decide whether or not I want it. Uh, that was Alita 1, Moon Racer, and um, let's see, I think Hubcap. And I wound up getting Hubcap, uh, but Tailgate. I have... What's that? Tailgate. Oh, yeah, Tailgate, Tailgate. I, I don't know why I call him Hubcap, uh, but Tailgate. Um, now, the first wave, I did uh, I did the same wave, uh, Starscream. I, I didn't like the way Starscream looked in pictures. I wanted to see it in hands. Picked it up in store. I hated it. It was the ugliest Starscream I've seen in years. You know, uh, yeah, it, the, the head is super tiny. The I mean, it, the proportions are terrible. Oh, and by the way, Aaron, I put it right back on the shelf. <laughs> I, I know you're retired, man, and you're a family man now. You got to tell Hasbro to stop it with the full stickers. Those got to go. <laughs> they just can't happen anymore. Jesus. The what stickers? The foil, the foil stickers. stickers. Oh, they are miserable. Sorry, Sorry, Alex, I don't mind if I have to place them myself, but they need to be better sure. quality. That, they need that to be comes better from quality. John Warden, who's a GI Joe guy. Who you know, GI Joe, you would sticker your vehicle up. I'm not against stickers. I'm, I'm against either. pre-applied foil stickers that are thin as hell and are crap. Yeah, I get Reaper labels all the time and put them on myself, but the, the ones we come get now is awful. Yeah, not not my uh, not my rodeo, man. Not my monkeys. Send, send some emails, <laughs> angry emails. You're Aaron Archer. Don't they know who you are? <laughs> they don't care. They don't care. It's like, do you know most who people, I am? Most people who know who who he is don't work there anymore. <laughs> But the you know the, going back to it though it's like you know those I, I, only sense purchases it helps yeah humans are it, weird it does and we like it being does able to see it and I'm not sitting there <laughs> saying that just to bash uh, the Starscream figure but I, but I was using it as an example it was something that I wanted to see in person and then whenever I finally did see it in person I'm like okay uh, I've I've seen this figure I've held this figure I've seen it up close I don't like it uh, or on the antithesis of that, I've seen the Elite One, uh, and the proportions are a little bit better, even though it's the same mold. The proportions are a little bit better on that one. Uh, but I didn't have the cash at the time to pick that one up. So I will pick it up the next time I see it. Uh, and that's, you know, it helped sway my decision seeing it in person. And to so, me, that's how brick and mortar can help. Um, so do you guys have. Oh, sorry. I was just gonna, you know, with your example here, 
you can't do this really with online stores as much, or not with specialty stores like Captured Prey or Big Bad. But you know, you can order whatever you want from Target or Walmart or used to good Toys R Us, and if you don't like it, you can return it. And you know what? You can honestly buy it from Orson at Captured Prey and return it to Target with a driver's license return if you don't like it. I know that's kind of, you know, minorly unethical. Um, <laughs> but, you know, there are – if you don't like what you get, you can return stores because most places, they want you in the store. Yeah. And if even just doing a return gets you in there, you're like, eh, I'll go pick up a few things while I'm here. And you're definitely going to hit the toy aisle anyways to see what they got because you're there. Um, so, you know, those options exist too. So your relationship with your collection has isn't the thrill of the hunt as much then, because you're you're you go for what you want and that that's that. Um, I I do know there is examples and maybe these are older examples, but you know we used to be more into the hunt. Yes, and, and it was like be. yeah, who found it. what and who drove how far, how many stops. Right, we all have those stories and heard that's those my stories. life. I, I, um, I I'm still hanging on to know, that. And I remember when G.I. Joe, before they came out with the full anniversary figures, with the, the, o, the other O-Ring set of figures, I don't know, remember what their names were, and the line stopped, and it became like a Toys R Us exclusive online or something. Or, and, and even though those figures sold at a certain clip, they were no longer part of a hunt. Therefore, they weren't as interesting, and they didn't do as well. They just kind of, no one, none of those fans wanted those figures. I'm not going to debate whether they were right figures or, or whatever they promoted right, but uh, that loss of the thrill of the hunt helped kill or, you know, it helped kill that part of the Joe line. And then it had to be reinvented into a much better thing anyway. That's for another podcast. But I, that was a lesson I learned from certain sectors of collecting. That, that thrill of the hunt was as much a part of anything as, uh, you know, that was as much of the experience as getting the damn thing. We've you know? a, we've actually we've actually uh, covered the thrill of the hunt. Yeah, uh, here on yeah. The, on the podcast, and it's it, it is something that has evolved uh, over time. Yeah, you know, even in the last decade to fifteen years, you know, it's so with fewer stores, yeah. I suppose that died out you know no well, KB. a large a large well, part of it is uh, is is fewer stores and the rising prices and prices and gas and sure. uh, you know i'm all getting right. older my well, we don't need to cover it again then but yeah yeah, yeah. so I, yeah. it's all part of that too yeah but uh, but then also there's uh, there's time you know i'm getting older and and my time is not not as much as it used to be when i was say in my early 20s you know i, I you know, yeah. uh, it was just funny when me and my wife, we've been married about 12 years. And I remember when we first started dating, you know, we didn't have any kids. It was just us. We used to go out and go toy hunting together all the time, you know, but then over time, you know, it just, it just shifted away. And it's like, I can just order it online. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, why, why, why bother getting out anymore? And the first few times I, I did kind of miss that. It used to be a thing we did, but you know, we, we move on into other things. Um, yeah. You know, the world has turned. Well, it's yeah, one of the see, things. See, I like to buy things Except for brick and mortar because uh, if I buy something online, she sees that. <laughs> and if I buy something at Target, then I can buy other things and hide it amongst that. That's a whole other podcast. Yeah, that's, too, a, that's a big, uh, that's big a, discussion. That's a big there. podcast. <laughs> Well, I mean, uh, you know, that's uh, that's the subject for next week. How to hide your like, purchases from your SO. <laughs> yeah, that's like getting the, the, the pre-dinner at the McDonald's on your way home because you don't want to know <laughs> the wife is cooking or she's not going to give you enough. So you have the free meal that you, she don't know nothing about. She's got me on a diet, so I eat five milkshakes before I get home. <laughs> and you eat just a little bit and say, man, that was good, honey, but I'm full. <laughs> I'm full. Just cut me a little piece. Yeah. <laughs> I'm doing better. I'm cutting it down. <laughs> Guilty. <laughs> but you know that that's something too that we you know like for uh, Robert's been, uh, Rob's been to uh, several of these. We have a um, uh, Kentucky or Midwest Transformers Collectors Meetup. Uh, we try to have them once a month, and we're trying to grow it to a point where it's kind of like a toy show, but it's not. You know, it's uh, it's more or less a gathering of friends where we have the camaraderie that we had 
uh, like whenever we were doing the toy hunts. You know, you'd get together with uh, two or three of your friends and drive all over God's creation looking for toys. You know, I, I thought you were going to say you'd see the same shady characters every time you went out, and so they became friends. That too, <laughs> <laughs> that too. But you know, usually it was like, um, you know, I know, uh, say ten years ago, it was uh, myself and Insane Galvatron and uh, and a couple other people from TFW uh, that we we would go, we would get together in Lexington, and we would hit up. Toys R Us and uh, the comic book shops and every Walmart and Target uh, in the in the entire city, you know, and it, it would be an all day thing. You know, we, uh, lunch would be involved. We'd uh, and it's just three, four, uh, three or four of us just getting together, having a good time, talking about toys all day long, looking for toys. Uh, you know, walking in there and 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 gawking at you know what what was there. Uh, and I don't know how many times I picked up a toy that wasn't a transformer because somebody else got something and they're like, Hey, this is cool. And I look at it and I'm like, yeah, I want one of those too. So I get, I get one. We're, and then you fight over that one figure that the only one's on the shelf. You have to figure out who gets it. That, that happened a time or two. Whoever oh. reaches it first, man. Yeah. That happened a time or two. Um, but I then, licked it. It's mine. <laughs> uh, but you know, one of the things we're trying to do with, uh, or would like to do with the collector's meetup is, is bring back the camaraderie that we had, uh, like going to the brick and mortar stores, and Orson being a uh, a vendor himself uh, helps a lot because he can actually bring wares from his store, or we can go to his storage unit where all of his stuff is, and not only can we can uh, sit around talk about toys, uh, play card games, uh, but we can also buy toys right there. Uh, and that's really cool. I know, uh, you know, the last meetup that we had at his his uh, his storage unit, uh, we sat around and played Cards Against Humanity, uh, ate uh, you know pizza and 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 nachos, and uh, I think he had a um, LG Jinrai uh, 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 on the on there uh, with the with a lot of the upgrade sets and everything. Uh, and people could pass it around the table and mess with it and like, hey, this is cool, you know. Uh, I, I really like that. It's like it, it it gives you the enjoyment of of the of the hunt, but you really don't go anywhere. You're just going to a central place. Have to drive three hours. Talk for yourself. Well, that's when you <laughs> that's when you put together a Tennessee meet a meetup. <laughs> but but still, you know. Going back to Toys R Us, you know what what kind of void um, from within? How, what is the ultimate, uh, Aaron? In your opinion, I mean, right now it's just conjecture. What what do you think will be the result of Toys R Us's vo- void? Let me let me put the question another way, Aaron. Put you on the spot. Yeah. All right. How many people are going to lose their jobs, and when do the layoffs start? You know, I. I don't know. I, I don't think I don't think it's catastrophic in that regard. I think they'll all the companies will have to be tighter on their overall number of items they make per brand. They won't maybe they may, you know, they'll still explore all the same types of innovation and, and opportunities. Um so that aspect I don't know if much changes. Um in the short term you know, certainly, uh, you know, there's going to be some just a little bit of fat to cut, but I don't know if that's in headcount or just how you manage the headcount on what projects are more a priority over others. Um, because I, I got to believe that the targets and the Walmarts are going to just double down on the big bets. So that means more Batman, you know, more Lego, more Star Wars, more Marvel, less you know, just random things, new things, kind of off to the edge things. Uh, they'll be more opportunistic maybe around new ideas uh, that just come out of nowhere, but because that's incentive to, to them. They get a deal with all that. But um, so I don't know. I don't know if there's going to be a bunch of layoffs. I think for the smaller companies, there definitely could be. The mid-sized companies, I think, because those, those lines, like I said, the SKUs that pay those employees 
are now kind of artificially getting smaller without the, the shelf space of a Toys R Us. So you don't need as many people working on extra SKUs of a given mid-range I'm, product line um, is one example. But there's a lot of stuff already in the pipeline. So that, that creates a glut um, that can be either re- redistributed to other stores or, you know, we got to cut costs quick. And that might might cause some people. But I don't know. I don't know. I've been thinking a lot about NECA. Yeah. Because there's basically two avenues of distribution for NECA. Yeah. There is Toys R Us. That's a perfect example Diamond. for me of, of a tough a tough a company in a tough spot. They yeah. work their way up to get into the big leagues and, and get more exposure. And now they've just lost that. And all that you know, Toys R Us doesn't just order ten thousand, right? They order a hundred thousand or whatever. So that's a perfect example I see of this issue for a smaller company. It does great work, great product line, but where do they? Put could it? you see do a they, company how do like they pay their employees? You know, could you see a company like that uh, that has good product and good ideas being absorbed by, say, Hasbro uh, for a further? Uh, no, those are profitable because they're small. You know, and and when you can get into these, you know, channels to distribute wider that's when these smaller companies can make a lot of money they're not trying to you know become too big too fast in some cases i mean and it's, some of these like neca that's a that's a you know those are heartfelt people making those products you know that's not a marketing scheme and those are licensed products it's not like hasbro so couldn't eventually get that license yeah. later on without owning yeah. the company. yeah and 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 i'm not saying this with neca i don't know these deals but you know, to get the deals, you have to demonstrate you have the ability to get into so many, you know, doorways. Uh, so a company like Toys R Us going away might hurt. It just hurts all the channels, you know, because there's now fewer places to demonstrate you can get, get your this line on the shelf. Uh, you know, 20th Century Fox makes wants to make deals with good people. They're going to get stuff out in this in this example. Yeah, Does that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, so the, oh, I buy ahead. some NECA products, but all of mine have been from NECA Direct, like you know, on my, or yeah. on Big Bad, like when Big Bad carries it. Yeah, and that's probably. I mean, if I can, as a toy designer, uh, you know, if you want to support great product, go ahead and buy it from if you can directly from NECA or you know even Lego, really. Um, uh, you know, because you're you're directly supporting that that effort. Hasbro, it's a little tougher to do, right? Um, they got the barge up right now. I don't know if it's going to succeed, yeah. but yeah, that's. I mean, that's how they're going to. What's it about halfway through on the Kickstarter? It's like twenty seven hundred. Eighteen days left on it. Seventeen days. Seventeen days. And they were Man. going for five thousand, like that. Yeah, they're that's just good. barely over half. Yeah, mm-hmm. I decided uh, I was. That might be the momentum, that. but I... <laughs> that's kind of cool. I like it. I it's too, it's kind of weird to me to see that because I never thought something like that would have been possible when we were there. That somebody would have agreed to that business idea to put that uh, money into hey, development of it hey, and then launch it. Doing the ad ads and stuff. You know, they were putting some money into some of those items. Yeah, but this you knew is, the ad This is to me the next logical up. step, you know, to make sure they get their money back. I mean, because I've said this before on this thing. I mean, the money it cost to tool uh, Metroplex, you know, was significant. And, uh, you know, a percentage of Hasbro's overall tooling budget for that year because it was so damn big. Uh, you know, that's a capital expense and, you know, capital C. Um, so things like that Jabba Barge, you know, uh, if, if they can get that funding, it totally makes it worth it. But if they don't get it, that that bill is huge, and, and to not know you'll sell them, it's difficult. Yeah. You know, I hope that it'll. I hope that it's successful just to give more future for that type of stuff. I don't collect Star Wars, but I would, as a collector, and Hasbro has properties that I care about, and you know, I want to see them use that avenue more and more. You know, collectors know they can get it. You don't have the stress yeah. of oh, is it going to sell I mean, out or whatever. It, um, if this thing does well. You know, you're 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 maybe a step or two away from getting an arc that you know is big and opens up that G1 guys can fit. Where in. Where would I put that, it? That is yes, that please. is not out of the realm of possibility if this thing works. 
uh, if it doesn't work, yeah, then they're not going to keep looking for a reason. Yeah, if it, I mean, if it doesn't work with Star Wars guys, is it going to work with Transformers guys? Yeah, and if it doesn't not. work with Star Wars, are they going to even try to get embarrassed again? Yeah. yeah. I mean, well, so, so did, I mean they did a great effort with Max, making the video and everything. Tacon just did something similar to Grand Max, where they, they had to get a certain number of orders to make the Grand Maxes, and then the extension goal was you got the Pretender Shell for Grand. We didn't get that goal, but we did get Grand Max in general, and he's coming out at the end of the month. I'd like to see more stuff like that. It's a smaller scale. It was you know 300 rather than, what, what's Jabba's barge, 500? 5,000. It's 5,000? Yeah. It's, There's no, no way price. Oh, it's $500. No. Sorry, I thought you made a thousand free orders. No, jeez, no, <laughs> three hundred bucks over five hundred bucks. It's it's a lot easier to swallow. Plus, the tooling's already there. You know, everyone wants Grand Max. Everyone wants Brave Max or Metro Titan next. So I hope they continue to do this kind of model. Metro Titan. I still want an, a Metro Titan. I mean, if you <laughs> if you guys are going to invest in third party items at the at those prices, then there's no reason if. If they opportunity exactly give you the right opportunity. See, that's that's one of the things I think. Some it's all of those about other. design, though. It's all about design. Well, yeah, that's, they, they might not do full transformers that way, but hell, how, what the heck do I know? Well, one, that's one of the things I, I see think. The arc and stuff like that. Yeah, I, that's, arc that way. that's one of the things oh, I boy. think, though, that, uh, that as far as uh, transformers go, the transformers fandom would be more on board something along this line. Uh, as as opposed to Star Wars fans, because we do have third party and we do, uh, as a fandom, spend a lot of money on third party, uh, very expensive third party items. Now it has gotten better over the last several years, where you know some third party items are on par in 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 price with official product, but you know then there's still like the Omega Supreme, the uh, the uh, the fans toys Terminus Giganticus, three hundred uh, over three hundred dollars for you know a, a one huge figure. Um, don't really have that with uh, with a Hasbro product right now uh, outside of import, you know. Uh, so it does get expensive, and, fa- and the fans uh, have been known uh, to. Uh, extend their uh, their their wallets a little bit more than I would I would think. Well, there's other a, fans. there's like an escalating thing going on with you know uh, collecting, whether it's the high end collectors or you know whatever uh, or families purchase power. But you know there's high end Lego sets now, toy sets. Uh, you know there's three hundred, four hundred, five hundred dollars is it's seemingly not a barrier to doing it as much as it once was. Eight hundred dollars. I, mean, I lived. I lived in. A, I mean, when I started, if you made an item that was more than sixty dollars, seventy five dollars. I mean, I was part of the Batman and Rob or Batman Forever Bat Cave, which was a crazy, giant monstrosity. Um, trying to redeco that, but uh, you know, if if it was over sixty bucks, it wasn't going to sell. You know, it was get the heck out of here. You know, you're breaking someone's bank. You know, mm. that that was the attitude. Um, and so to see how they can do it now, I mean, geez, uh, five hundred dollars for a Lego set is nothing these days for the right Lego set. Um, well, so I, sh- I saw a, a, a Star Lego Transformers to be able to support such a thing. I saw a Lego Technic set the other the other day. It was a uh, uh, a Mac semi uh, yeah. th- that you could assemble. It has a working engine, like a like a moving engine in it. The pistons uh, work. Uh, you know it. This thing is amazing. Uh, I looked it up on Amazon just to see how much this set was. It's like a near three thousand piece set, and it's a hundred and eighty nine dollars. And you can you can turn it into a semi with a, a trailer that has uh, like a um, uh, it's got like support arms. It has like this big uh, the big box that it like sets it off to the side, or you can reassemble it into a garbage truck. Uh, and I'm like, this thing is cool as a trucker. Uh, you know, I would really, really enjoy this set, I think. But then I see that price tag and I'm like, $189. I'm not that into it. Uh, not that into it. But for a transformer, $189. Sure. Give me, you know, <laughs> uh, it, it's for the right one for, yeah, for the, it's the right for thing the, for the right money. Definitely. Yeah. 
and it's it's weird. You know, I guess I guess I'm just I dropped two fifty on Masterpiece Dinobot with I know a lot of people were pissed about that price, but I was not one of them. Oh the Velocigaptor? Was, yeah. Yeah. I mean I was just all about it. No, sir. Now, I mean, if if I if I still collected beast figures, I probably would uh, would be on it too. Um, you know, I'm I'm still sitting here waiting on Masterpiece Galvatron and uh, you know some uh, some uh, some of the others. You know, but uh, let's let's get I back. Got to Sovereign that. last week. There, there is no need for Masterpiece Galvatron anymore. I have Sovereign, and if there was uh, there was an official Masterpiece Galvatron, I would buy it too. <laughs> Sovereign isn't cartoon accurate enough for me. Your mom's not cartoon accurate enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> the cartoon of the blob. Oh, Did you, you just got yourself. You beat me on your own mom. I can't even compete. <laughs> before, before we wrap things up, uh, Aaron, I want to ask you, what are you drawing? I'm drawing tomorrow's March of the Robots. Ooh, cool. It's always good to be a day ahead. All right, Don't tell anybody. It. And I got a free idea I want to throw out at Hasbro, this whole Kickstarter thing. I know a thing or two about Kickstarter. Are they so listening? I'm, I'm going to throw a thing. Probably not. <laughs> this, is, this is how you do the, the USS flag, right? You do the USS flag, but then you give it an extra set of stickers to make it into broadside. Done. <laughs> Now you're appealing to two types of collectors. Legit. I see. But how many opportunities over the last 30 years have they had uh, had to mix G.I. Joe and Transformers? And very seldomly have we uh, had that happen. It's like we had, in, in recent years, the only thing I can think of is Viper. The combined the comic exclusive the comic concepts. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm talking about general Which, release. Yeah. But I mean, you well, the, guys... the word the word from the you know we talked about this while we were there, and the GI Joe team was all for it. But it seemed the Transformers design team was always against it. Well, it was tricky because there were two things that people wanted, and they were competing ideas. Sometimes somebody always wanted true scale, so we want three and three quarter inch GI Joe figures that fit into vehicles. Well, hell, even the mask vehicles were smaller, you know, to, so that you could do that. Um, it's hard to transform a giant vehicle and keep a low price point. You know, that just ain't going to happen. So, you know, you start looking at motorcycles and, and stuff, and it just wasn't, wasn't ever sexy. And then once you start adding Transformer, then, you know, you involve Takara. And then, you know, this co-developed thing between G.I. Joe and Hasbro or Transformers... Hasbro is really paying, or you know, paying more for GI Joe than they need to be, in some ways. And that's talking inside pool a little bit, but you know, it just didn't make sense internally to mix those brands too often. And that's why the ones you see don't have transforming figures in them most of the time. You just they're just GI Joe figures decoed as Starscream or Soundwave or whomever because they don't transform. Once they transform, it's a whole different ballgame. I always assumed it was because. Uh the Transformers brand didn't want the stink of G.I. Joe's failure getting all over their oh. stuff. <laughs> that, no, that was part of it. We, we, yeah, no, that, that was absolutely I'm, I'm part just, of it. I'm just there talking shit. Always, there was <laughs> so much going on with Transformers that G.I. Joe felt like it was in a perpetual reinvention while not changing, if I can say it that way. Um, and that, uh, you know, that's just yep. how it went. So there was never a reason to uh, the Joe uh, put, guys put wanted peanut butter Transformers. and chocolate together in this right. case. The Joe guys wanted to capitalize off the success of Transformers. Sure. Transformers sure. guys didn't need the Joe guys. Uh, sure, but the business didn't need it either. But it would be it would be, it would be cool, business <laughs> and maybe not actually helping the GI Joe business any more than by not doing it in the first place. The amount of money you would have spent, and and all that, you know, those types of products are just wash. You know, it's a wash. You know, to, but money guess, be made, but no reason to do it. There's other to, ways to make better money. To kind of bring it back briefly here to 
on topic before, I guess, you know, we probably are wrapping up, but <laughs> with, uh, you know, as adult collectors are more and more of a thing. Um, and, you know, there was a time when Hasbro told collectors at BotCon, you know, they said it nicer than this, but I'm going to paraphrase, you know, you guys aren't important to us, so we're not catering to you. I really feel that's kind of changed lately. With Aaron sitting there like, I'm, and I'm and the one that was saying <laughs> Was it? I, I can't remember who it was, but... Um, uh, well, I, I, toys I that mean, made us, that came out on Netflix, each of the brands the toys that made us hit skyrocketed those markets. And I kind of feel that it might give a chance for you know, more dedicated toy stores, even potentially with brick and mortar presences, um, some sort of leg to stand on in the nostalgia market, if nothing else, um, as time goes on. I mean, who knows? It may be too late for brick and mortar, but it, I, I do find that interesting, the effect that the toys that made us had on those lines. And G.I. Joe was one of them. Yeah. Has yeah. it been quantified? Well, people, for, people forget. They don't go to Toys R Us every day or every week or every month. You know, or get online, you know, and look up their childhood favorites. You know, some of these guys don't even know G.I. Joe never stopped getting made, right? Um, so when those shows come out, it does rekindle like, oh, I had those, or I remember that. Or, um, most of us grew, you know, kind of went different ways. We stayed with it and were enamored with these stories and these characters and stuff. So we know everything that's going on. Um, so yeah, it, it definitely did awaken old time collectors. I could see how that happened. So, Rob, to your point, I think if I think if there were smaller specialty stores that catered to adult collectors, I would be on board. I'm not sure what would sway me from shopping online instead, but if there was something there where you could guarantee that there'd be some stock of yeah. something that I would actually be interested in, uh, I, I would definitely be on board. I don't know what that that other extra piece is to to make it so I'm not online to make it so I'm going in the store. But if that piece ever gets figured out, I'm down for it. Aren't you worried that stores like that are just going to turn into distribution hubs for Funko Pops? Uh, a little <laughs> bit, and and pops have to pops have to factor into the equation now because of what they are. But you know, Funko Pops. If, if I could go babies. somewhere and there's a giant wall of pops, but on the other side there's actually a section of Transformers or Marvel Legends, or Star Wars that has regularly rotating stock that I can actually go in there you know, every couple of weeks and find something new. Right, or every that, couple months and that find something new. That deluxe figure is priced at $25.99 or $29.99. Well, exactly. What, what's, the, what's the extra piece, what's the extra experience of going to that place that convinced me to pay that premium? I don't know what that is yet, but something about social interaction, or if it was like a like a Hooters a coffee shop or bar thing that also was toys or something. I think there's room for a market like that. But as far as stuff like Toys R Us is where it's less focused, even though it's just focused on toys, I, I say good riddance. Wow. Maybe that's my <laughs> hatred of children, but you, you, yeah. You, you, I'm just a bunch he of... He really hates children. Goddamn so, yuppie millennials that okay. don't appreciate... Well, yeah, besides yuppie millennial <laughs> things. You guys have all my been first, to Toys My R son's Us's. first word was Toys R Us. Quite literally. Oh, I was nice. born in a Toys R Us, all right? Okay, so do the, do, do the Toys R Us's you guys go to, are they always dark? No, the one... The local, uh, the local one here was always... Brightly lit, as well as the okay. one in Lincoln. Uh, the, there was one was brightly lit. Into there was one in dark. Cincinnati that was dark that I remember. Ours was brightly it's, lit, it's so a you could see those. Place. They, they wanted you to be able to see those empty shelves really nice and cleanly in ours. It's, it's, always, it's always dark and dirty. You know, whichever one I go into, there's like five relatively near me, and it's always dark and dirty and depressing. And there's always some family in there just letting their kids run wild. And I'm just like, why did I come to this hellhole? <laughs> well, wow. so, yeah, that end, for, for the for the kids, I mean, they'll be just as enamored with the colors at Target that they are at Toys R Us. They'll be just enamored with the bright eye, big eyes and the the buttons mm -hmm. and lights flashing as they are at a Toys R Us. So, uh, yeah, it's not like uh, the, the, that part of the experience won't change for children per se. Um, I think just, there's yeah, also room, like I was place. saying, for the. Uh, the adult toy store, not that sounds dirty. Not what I meant. Yeah. The collector toy store. <laughs> that Neximus Maximus. For, yeah. yeah, I think there's a, there's room for a kid version of that too. I, I don't know what that is. We, locally here, we have a store called Toy Go, that is kind of that way, but they'd sell like the more 
kind of expensive specialty kids' toys like the marionettes or the, the premium Melissa puzzles, those store. guys. What's that? It's a Melissa and Doug toy store, basically. Yeah, that. That stuff. Yeah. So th- that's I think what, there's I mean, room that's... for everybody. But not a room for one thing that is everything. I think you have to be more focused if you want to succeed. Yeah. And you'll, you might see Hasbro and Mattel at least, you know, start... You know, when they offer different products to drug stores, uh, you don't see it all the time at the retail, other retail. Um, you may see them slightly alter the types of products they can give to those smaller stores, but I don't know. Now, drug, drug stores is about the smallest they deal with. Like Walgreens uh, with the... Uh clone exclusives yeah. that they had recently yeah i mean because if, if you're thinking i mean there's one pe- one peg per brand basically so how little they uh, they get per store magnify that they don't really order a well, lot ha- having worked at Wal- to what having you know, worked at walgreens before uh <laughs> i know how they get their toys in and they don't yeah. get a case per se they uh, yeah. all their stuff is shipped in in plastic totes by onesies it's like yeah. they will. Yeah. They've uh, already divided it up. Yeah, yeah. it's like uh, so it's you like don't separated go there for the thrill of the hunt. You no. know, you you go there to play the lottery, maybe yeah. to be surprised <laughs> that you found something. I but did that last year. Act, you can't actually hunt there because you're going to lose. Titan basically. Returns Croc. The first time I ever yeah, found it wave. was there. Yeah, I was like, I, what? I did like <laughs> seventy different Walgreens and tried to find them all, and I did. It just took a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so let's let's wind it up on something positive here, um, and it's uh, I tweeted uh, um, last night. What's your favorite Toys R Us Transformers exclusive? Uh, and I figured we'd go around here. I'll, I'll read uh, Jason Tate's uh, reply. Uh, he tweeted Masterpiece Soundwave with all the tapes. That was a bargain compared to the cost of buying the original Takara releases and a dream come true uh, as a, an as an OG fan to get the entire gang in one package like that. Uh, and I, I agree that that was that was a great one. Uh, but I, I figured we'd go around the room and uh, and and uh, hear different uh, different takes on this. And I, I'll start with Aaron. What's your favorite Toys R Us Transformers exclusive? Rick, which one's my favorite Toys R Us exclusive? Masterpiece Optimus Prime? Probably. Probably. MP01? I was in MP10. Yeah, the, uh, if that was an exclusive at the time. I can't recall what was exclusive. That's why I asked Rick. I, we made products, and then they would get designated sometimes after the fact. Mm-hmm. So I, I have a hard time knowing where these things end up. Uh, but, yeah, if it was if MP the masterpiece or 20th anniversary or whatever it was called i think it eventually uh, yeah. came out at walmart uh in a different yeah different deco but, but i think it originally was at toys r us yeah yeah mp01 definitely had some sort of walmart release mp10 yeah. was toys r us only though i'm pretty sure which is the second version of prime mp01 showed up at walmart for the 20th anniversary of the movie with the dvd so two, two years later with the dvd yeah the first one was toys r us so Rick, what but about it, you? It, you know, for okay. me, for me, it was just nice that we would get to do those things because it was always fun to switch up deco or use names that you didn't get to use too often, or uh, you know, pull up odder things or opportunities. Um, that that's what I'll you know that that'll be lost a little bit um, from those those times, those exclusives. Leave you with that. Okay, Rick. I don't have an favorite exclusive product, but uh, growing up, I didn't have a whole lot of great memories of my dad, but there was one memory. Uh, I turned uh, four years old, and my dad took me to Toys R Us, and I think it's the only time I'd ever gone to Toys R Us with my dad. And uh, my dad, being a huge fan of World War II, insisted that I buy Hound. And so we bought Hound, and I still have them. And I got to take a picture of both my kids the first time they went to Toys R Us. And I'll have a picture of them the last time they go to Toys R Us, too. And You're going to make me cry, man. One of the, you know, going as a Transformers collector, going to Japan 
it's like going to Mecca. You, you have to make that journey. You have to make that pilgrimage at least once in your life. And I got to go to Toys R Us Japan and experience that. And it's a, it's a completely different environment than what we have here. And mm. I'm very grateful that uh, I have those, those three Toys R Us memories to, to get me through the next uh, however long I have left in my life. Five, ten years. <laughs> I, I've I've always wanted to visit Japan and uh, and Toys R Us Japan was always one uh, one of the things on my bucket list and it's sad that that will likely never happen now. So unless something miraculous happens with a buyout and those are untouched, um, you know that's that's sad. Uh, Christian, what about you? Your favorite Toys R Us Transformers exclusive. Well, since Soundwave has been taken, I think I've got a tie. Uh, the next one would be Masterpiece Acid Storm. Mm. Because what an amazing deco on an amazing mold. Love it. And then the one that no one would think of is Universe 2 Countdown. Mm. Oh. I love MicroMasters. Countdown is awesome. That mold is fun. And it was kind of a stealthy exclusive. No one knew it was coming. It showed up. I was like, oh, man, that looks so cool. And I went and bought him. He's amazing. Well, what about Sunstorm? That uh, the Ghost Flame Deco. Less good than Acid Storm. Really? I thought the Ghost yeah. Flames were amazing. The Ghost Flames are cool, but it's ruined by the brown plastic. Yeah, it should have went with like an orange or a red. Yeah. Uh, Robert, what about you? You know, I'm a, a little bit of a air inside there. Of I don't remember what they have, um, but you know, I don't have a problem piggybacking on people though, and. A lot of my collection focus is definitely going towards Masterpiece. So, yeah, the Soundwave on packaging, I'll, I'll piggyback on uh, on Tate. You know, that's that's pretty awesome. You know, I was really happy when I finally got MP10 from Toys R Us. It was a bit of actually an ordeal um, online because, like, it was coming up, it was going out. And then, like, Toys R Us New York was jacking up the price, and some people were trying to buy extras and help people out. Some people were scalping. You know, that one, MP10's U.S. release was just an ordeal. Like, that, I remember that. That was... That was a thing. Um, I paid so much for mine on the aftermarket. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, but it's not, I don't know if it's a good memory, but it's a memory. Uh, <laughs> but the, the sound wave relief was pretty badass. All of them together in one. That's. I thought that was a, ca- a case of Hasbro really doing it right for G1 Masterpiece when since then I felt they've really ignored the line. So, which is unfortunate and, oh, good Lord, we're getting a show. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, I'd like to I, – I hope that uh, G1 Masterpiece continues to happen. And given that that was Toys R Us, I'm worried that Hasbro with brand Unity won't let the line continue without an avenue for it. Because, um, you know, that Prowl anime edition was supposed to be a Toys R Us exclusive, I, I thought. Maybe not, but I'm – It's it's Entertainment Earth now. Okay. Oh, is it? Okay. So, so it, yeah. It, it will get – it will see, a, see the light of day. Um, well, I, I think I'm going to cheat a little with my favorite uh, Toys R Us Transformers exclusive, and it won't be a single figure. Uh, it's an entire line, and it is uh, these guys. The Toys R Us Commemorative Generation 1 series. Uh, I absolutely, I will never forget walking into Toys R Us in Lexington. And seeing the Generation 1 toys that I grew up with as a kid back on the store shelf again. Uh, it it was emotional. It was an emotional moment for me. And I'm sad that we didn't get more. Uh, but, you know, I mean, who who can't say that they didn't like walking in and, well, if I can get it on camera here, uh, and, and open it up and seeing the great, you know, great, great, great toys. You know, I'm too young. I'm you're too young. young. You're you're just you're just a pup. So, <laughs> what's what's all that metal? Yeah, <laughs> why does it have metal? And and well, then that, there's I like it's all that chrome. I, I like for the last five minutes of the podcast, Aaron <laughs> rotates his video the correct way. Yeah. <laughs> Finally, and then and then I'm you old. have uh, have uh, you know, that's very Paul, cool. 
Michael McConaughey uh, autograph. Nice. This year. That's really cool. Uh, but you know the entire. It was, commemor- it was cool seeing them on the shelves. I had bought the Takara of box reissues instead, but uh, that was still definitely cool. I'll, I'll agree it, with you. It was definitely cool seeing a three pack of Insecticons on TRU shelves for two hundred dollars. That was that really was cool. that was the the when, very first wave uh, was when very... they fir- when they offered them two years earlier for forty bucks. Yeah. The it, well, the very first wave of the commemorative series uh, was very reasonably priced, and I remember they sold out super fast. Um, you know, so much so that I didn't get to see the Optimus Prime on the shelf. I actually had to buy it from another collector uh, out of Chicago. Uh, but um, the rest of them, Hot Rod, uh, you know, seeing Hot Rod on the shelf again, um, you know, it, it was very, very cool. Uh, and then with, with the second release or the second wave of, uh, the commemorative series, that's when Toys R Us stepped in and said, Hey, you know, we're going to make these absurdly, uh, expensive. Um, you know, it's like, how can you offer hot rod at 1999 and then bring in, uh, blue streak for 40 bucks, you know, or 30 bucks. Uh, it, it, it seemed ludicrous. But we paid it because you know we we wanted these toys and that's you know that that was what the price we had to pay, um, and then it did get stupid with like the Insecticons that that was just absolutely ridiculous. Uh, but seeing the Generation One toys on the shelf again uh, was was a dream come true for me. Um, and again, I said I was just sad that we didn't get more. Uh, and it just seemed like the line kind of eventually petered out. I, I, I forget what was the last last release. Astro Train was it Astro Train? And I, I found that one at a five below, or not a five below, but a a, a Tuesday morning. Astro Train and Rodimus. I got it at, and, at a Tuesday morning. And uh, Ricochet. Yeah, who, who whose bio was absolutely terrible? I tell you, just. <laughs> Home Slice had contacted me and asked me to write that bio real quick. That was, yeah, that was the first thing I ever did for the Big H. Is that for me or for Forrest? No, Home Slice. Home Izzo. Slice. Oh, Home Slice. Yeah, Home Slice. Oh, this, All right, Chief. This little yeah, guy right here. Yep. <laughs> but, you know. Ricochet. Yeah, Ricochet is a funny name because uh, we couldn't use Stepper. So it was being reissued, so I called it Ricochet because it was at least a throwback to the, the old Target one. Master. Yeah, yeah. So uh, was was Stepper just not? Was it too generic, or do you remember? Um, no. This is the kind of thing that happens in the toy industry. There are little kid products that are like Steppers, or that name is used for like step stools or step uh. ladders for for little kids. So it just becomes a name that's being used by another toy company. So they have the, the lead trademark on it or copyright. And so that you just have to move on. So the, the stepper was too, you know, just too generic almost or you know, or couldn't have had like, like Autobot stepper or target master stepper. Or... Yeah. For whatever reason, we couldn't do it that way. Some, hmm. some, you could do that with generic words. You can't do it with, claimed terms yeah, kind of like autobot tracks you know it's yeah, like, or autobot batman yeah yeah <laughs> yeah I, I can see i can see that point autobot yeah, you can't yeah yeah but you know uh, for all for all of uh, the uh, the disappointments that we had like the high prices and everything we did have some things uh oh you know like the first release of stepper in the united states uh as ricochet uh um god and rye in the Power Master uh, Optimus, Optimus Prime with Apex Armor, we had Apex never got that yeah. in the United States. Um, yeah, that was fun. You know, White Astro Train. Yes. So it's it's really it was a really awesome awesome thing, and it, whenever I look back at Toys R Us, that's one of the things that'll that will pop in my uh, in my mind is is the memory of of seeing G One sh- uh, toys on the shelves again uh, in reissues. And then, of course, the masterpieces. You know, of course, by the time, you know, Toys R Us got so, most of them, already had the Takara one, so. 
But what uh, what was you going to say? So those are, I mean, those are good examples that like a Walmart, you know, they worry about that type of product. That's high end product. It gets too dinged up in their stores. No one's going to buy it. Toys R Us have different attitudes. Those are the types of things that become tricky in the future. Not to end it on a, on the downer, but Mm -hmm. those are two, those are perfect items. Why they were at Toys R Us and why at Toys R Us, uh, you know, could, could do things in a different way than other other retailers um, they were happy to take old retro product and, and different things like that well, hopefully somebody else will be able to step up but right now it's a big question mark who could possibly do that or uh, is there any toy store now that's in existence that that really stands to gain from the closure of toys r us as a standalone that's na- that's like national or international i for me, just in the business side of it, I, I, I see maybe the opportunity for a Coles or a, you know, Coles, maybe, Coles it's, maybe, yeah, well, those types of mid range prices, if they can eat up more of the, a unique angle on it, they could maybe take some of that share. If they don't exist either, then, you know, we're, we're again, going back to big bets on winning brands, you know, from the bigger retailers. Mm-hmm. Any uh, closing thoughts from anybody? Downer. <laughs> womp womp. Womp womp. <laughs> I, uh, I was so sad Toys R Us was closing, I, uh, I stole a shopping cart. I mean, they're not going to use it anymore. <laughs> and then I, I wasn't too happy with it because it had like some hair like wrapped around a tire. So I took it back, and I, I told the guy there, I'm like, yeah, I, I took a shopping cart the other day. I wasn't happy with it, so I brought it back. He's like, hang on a second. And he gives he you comes another comes over. One. He's like, we got these ones in December. Take these. Take this one. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's yeah, probably one I of those employees that that didn't care anymore. <laughs> well, the last week I've been there, you could tell that they are, you know, their life isn't going so good. Their place they liked working isn't going so good. And then everyone shows up looking for sales and want to pick the bones. And, and it just makes them feel, I mean, they didn't look happy. <laughs> they did not look happy. Well, I, I do feel, I do feel for people. I know uh, yeah. A, a, yeah. a friend, a, a good friend of mine, he, he is a assistant manager at Toys R Us and it's not been fun. He actually left a uh, company he had been with, uh, for a very long time, he had been with them over ten years, I think, uh, to become a manager uh, at Toys R Us, to become part of the Toys R Us family. I remember he was so happy for it. I mean, he even changed his profile picture on Facebook to the Toys R Us logo. Uh, you know, he was he was ecstatic. That was about a year ago. Oof. And now yeah. this, it's like a big slap in the face, and. You know, just talking to him at Lexington Comic Con last year or last week, um, it was almost as if it, he he's he seemed distant about it. You know, it's like if he's if he's a microcosm of what everybody else feels. Uh, I really feel for all the employees of that company. Uh, it's sad, um, and a lot of people's been there for many many years. You know, it's not just a weekend job or a nighttime job for some people. Uh, it's it's their career, and we got to remember that the people there are those people out there that this is in fa- this is affecting in that negative way, and uh, I hate that. Uh, you know, we're sitting here talking, oh well, it sucks that we're not going to be able to get toys in a, in a specific way anymore, uh, and we're not going to. Uh, we're not going to have these certain exclusives uh, and and what have you, but that's really selfish in in and of itself. If we stop and don't remember the employees, um, you know, it, that sucks. You know, and, I, and it's I, been on my mind, but I didn't want to go there. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I, you know, I think I'll, the only like positive side, or not positive side, but the positive outlook there. You know, is unemployment is down and so it's very low so i do hope and wish them the best of you know being able to go out and find uh new jobs to continue their careers um and i hope wish them the best of luck you know i i recently got laid off 
Um, you know, and I, I, you know, I had a new job in two weeks. It was, it was pretty, really quick. Yep. So, you know, yeah. so I, the people that work at the stores, to your point, I think they got, you know, there's opportunities, I, I, you know, out there. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of toy people, toy designer and graphic designer and marketing people out of New Jersey now who are going to, looking for jobs in the industry and those jobs have been tough to tougher and tougher to get anyway in the industry. So it, that part of it, Rick, that that's the shakeup. Now there's excess. Now there's going to be a lot of toy industry people who just, there's not Flooding enough the holes to, to, I mean, that's one way to say it, but there's just not enough places to go now. You know, there had been enough atrophy of toy companies as well over the years. Um, so that's, that's, also, you know, a factor in those people, you know, that's, those are, those are toy industry veterans in, in a lot of cases too. So from my side, yeah, I definitely feel for, for that. Cause these are people who've probably already been chasing the dream. You know, they've already worked at a Hasbro or somewhere in New York or, you know, to, to keep in the toy business. So just another hit there as well. You know, it's, you know, it's, it's affecting a lot of people and, uh, not just not just from you know a collector and a, a toy fan point of view, uh, from inside the stores to inside the industry, uh, you know we got to remember everybody that uh, that is affected by this and hope that they that they are able to recover. Uh, however, you know the the executives are ha- getting their fourteen billion dollar uh, severance pays and. You know, uh, yeah. it's, I know it's and life is going to be extremely rough for them. Uh, so, yeah. Um. I heard that they might have trouble getting the f- the fuel for their yacht that swims in the pool on their bigger yacht. So, you know, <laughs> I, I hope they can make do. Yeah. And that right there enrages me, how a court system can allow that to happen in the light of something like this happening. You know, there's a lot of people that... that made them successful and they're forgetting those people and uh you know I, I i don't believe in online petitions you know they they never seem to really work uh but my friend that works at toys r us he shared a uh, petition that is supposed to be for toys r us employees uh and uh and the people of the like uh, I shared it on the tfyop facebook group uh, if you know somebody or would like to be a part of it uh, who knows? Maybe, maybe it it will reach somebody that that matters. Uh, I don't know, uh, but again, it's it's a last ditch effort trying to get get something out of out of this this horrible situation uh, for the employees. So if you're interested in it, check that uh, that link out. It's on the TFYLP Facebook group. Um, and uh, you know, I, I think I stole. Aaron's thunder and, and ended it on a downer myself, <laughs> you know, but you know, I, I took the blame off of you. I took the blame off of you. I, I, I absorbed the impact, bro. <laughs> but, um, you know, let's, uh, let's not forget Toys R Us. Uh, you know, it started, in, I believe 1948, I believe whenever it started and here it is 2018 and it's, uh, no more, uh, really sad thing. All right, guys, I believe uh, that'll wrap us up for TFYLP. I want to thank Aaron for joining us again. Uh, Robert, Christian, uh, thanks for rushing home. I know you were you were in a hurry, um, but uh, I really appreciate it. And Rick, uh, as always, you can just sit there and play with your beard. You dick. <laughs> you dick. <laughs> <laughs> Love you guys, man. We'll see you next time on TFYLP. Good night, everybody. Bye, everyone. See ya.